Welcome back everyone to our Let's Play series of Motorsport Manager. Now, as you can probably tell immediately on the screen, I have jumped ahead in the season. So I uploaded the first, I believe, four races of this particular season, and now I've moved ahead to the final event number 11 in the series. And the reason I did that is because I, I'm really interested in next year. OK, so next year is when I think if we're going to have a chance to contend, it will. It, I knew it wouldn't be this year that we could contend for the team championship. But the soonest we could probably do it would be next year. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, first and foremost, I knew this year was going to be all about seeing where we stand as far as our staff, our drivers, our car, you know, all sorts of stuff like that. And then developing parts for next year. So really trying to get as good as we can possibly be uh, for the stretch next year uh, in the chase after the championship. So where do we stand so far? Well, right now, as of right now, we have the best drivers on the grid. HQ is middle of the road. Staff is basically middle of the road. Uh, and then sponsors, we're doing great there. And then we've got a sponsorship opening right now that we should be over uh, the course of this video. We should be getting offers for that. The next thing I want to take a look at is our car itself. And I've been focused heavily on the acceleration or the gearbox. Right now we are at number six, but if we come in and look at fitting parts, you'll notice down here we have a legendary part. So I went through average, good, epic, and now legendary. And the legendary part is right at 458 out of 570. So my goal before this final race is to get that up to 570, or at least as close as I can possibly get it. And then I also know that even beyond the final race, we still got some amount of time. I don't remember exactly, but some amount of time to continue the development before the end of the season. Um, I've also contemplated perhaps uh, doing the same thing with brakes here. Uh, even though I might not get them done in time for the final race, go ahead and start those uh, before the end of the cycle. I don't really want to do that, um, but it seems like all the competition is doing that, uh, and they just continually uh, update things. So, And I've sort of changed my mind a little bit on that. I, the more I thought about that, I thought, you know, it's not really – I used to think it was gaming the system. Now, the more I thought about it, I thought, no, it's not really gaming the system because – Teams basically year-round develop their products, even if there's not necessarily a race coming up in the next few weeks. So they're constantly trying to get better. So now I think, okay, I see where they're coming from. So um, right now, money-wise, we're in a hole, which I knew we would be. Uh, so I've been fighting that the entire year. Uh, but we've been getting enough here and there just to keep us from, you know, getting, you know, 8 or $10 million in the hole. So we've been, you know, somewhere between one and a half to about $4 million in the hole. And of course, I know we're going to have the prize money coming up here at the end of the year that will really be helping us out. Um, and we'll see how much that is. I have no idea. Uh, I would expect that it would be higher than what we would receive in the tier three, but how much higher? I have no idea. So uh, let's take a look at new parts here. And I'm going to go ahead and work on new brakes. Now, I would love to work on a new front wing. Um, and that is based off of uh, the tracks and what they send to, tend to favor as far as what is crucial, what is important, that kind of thing. Um, the front wing would be the most important thing aside from the gearbox. But the front wing, uh, I've taken a look at it, and I can't really get a whole lot better than what I already have on the car. So from that perspective, I don't think it's worth the money and the time to do that. Because again, at this point, uh, any product that we develop, even though we might be done before the next race, I am focused everything on that gearbox before the next race. So I'm not going to be stopping that gearbox development to, to break in and say, oh, yeah, I got some new brakes. I need to get the reliability and, and so on uh, ready to go. So anything I do now is basically just to continue the development and try to get us better off. So we're doing pretty good, actually. Uh, with the front wing, considering that we don't have any HQ buildings dedicated to its development. So we're not bad. You can see wh while we're seventh, we're not that far below uh, the line. So it looks like really nobody has, uh, or at least not necessarily very many teams, have much as far as development money going into the wings. 
Now, in acceleration, we are number six right now. And you can see we're a little bit above average on the grid. And my goal here is to get us up as high as we can before we get to, you know, designing the new car and into the season and everything. So we're great on the gearbox for now. Uh, let's go ahead and start on brakes. And before we do that, let's go ahead and go into fit parts right quick. And let's see. So 335 is what we're looking at here. I'd like to get as far above 335 as we can in order to make this worth it. If we can't get much above it, then I won't bother with it. All right, so I see plus 20 there I like. Uh, the, the wrist level really isn't gonna matter to me because I don't plan on being able to use these. Deceleration, uh, reliability, no good. All right, so I see this. Uh, this isn't terrible, but it looks like these two slots. I've got two slots open and it looks like these are the two, although let's see, I guess it's a 355. Okay, now I wanted to see if it would get us a higher number. I didn't think it would, but uh, I wanted to make sure. So it gets us to 375. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That gets us up not as high as I would like for it to be, but I think it's a, a good step in the right direction anyway. All right, so it should be done seven days before the race. That doesn't matter to me because uh, we're not gonna be using this part anyway. All right, so let's go ahead and build that, get that development underway. We've also got several other things going on, but first let's go ahead and take a look at our mail and just sort of get these things out of the way. They've got to take care of repairing the car before they can get back to work on improving it. All right, let's go ahead and do this interview. Let's see, it seems to be a very testing weekend for Raphael. He actually finished pretty well. So these interviews are really starting to get on my nerves, quite frankly, because they don't seem to really... Uh, be based on reality in any way. I mean, we're not a top tier team and we don't expect to win every race, you know, that kind of thing. So it's weird. All right, so he bouncing back soon, hopefully. All right, so let's see. Sergio struggled. Now he definitely did struggle. Um, he has struggled quite a bit this year. We'll take a look here in just a moment at the standings. All right, we're sure he'll bounce back. That'll give him a little bit of a morale boost. And again, this that seems to be mo mostly a pointless endeavor to get maybe a few points here and there on happiness. But if we come back in to the home screen, you can see in the points we're sixth and 13th. All right, now Sergio has really struggled and I'm trying to figure out, you know, I know we don't have the greatest car, but I'm trying to figure out, is this where he sort of met his match now? You know, in the previous series, we could sweep podiums and do things like that during the year because he has, he's a three, not quite, uh, just a little bit into a four-star driver as opposed to Rodriguez, who's a little bit past four stars. So Rodriguez is essentially a full star past him. And I'm struggling trying to figure out, has he basically, is this as high as he's going to get? Now, I know he's not a, a tier one driver right now, for sure, but has he gone as far as he's going to go in this series? Now, it looks like he may have maybe helping me out with that decision because if we take a look at contracts, he is uh, basically at the end of his contract, end of this year, and we got one more year, or excuse me, two more years on Rafael, which is good because that should line up with about the end of his driving career uh, as far as whenever his stats start to decline. I know it's somewhere around the mid-30s when that happens, so... We'll see how that goes. But if I click on renew contract here for Sergio, it says he's not interested. So I'm looking at finding another driver for next year. Um, we've got money issues to deal with because of the struggle of this during the year. So there's a lot going on. And because of that, I've been scouting uh, a few more drivers here and there trying to see what I could find. Uh, and I'm left with the decision of do I try to find maybe a pay driver? Let's go ahead and I'd like to find a younger driver if I could. Let's see, let's go ahead and just make this like this. Okay, there really are no younger drivers. I've done a few, let's see, what about 22? Okay, so there really aren't any more. So let's just come back in. And so we've got a couple of drivers here that should be pretty good uh, and great at feedback. That is awesome. And Unfortunately, he, this driver has been driving entirely in the European series, uh, but they're pretty good. Uh, marketability is not that great, so that's a downer. 
but I do know that if I looked at getting uh, maybe a pay driver, then that would be good for money purposes, would be great for money purposes, but it probably takes away any chance I have of winning the team championship because I'm not, uh, most of the team drivers I've seen or the money drivers I've seen uh, were very low as far as the number of stars. It'd be great if I could find one that was at least a three-star money driver, but we'll keep uh, working on that. You can see here, I mean, there's some pretty good numbers here uh, as far as the potential, but marketability on the ones I've found so far just really aren't that good. And of course, there's some other things that are not all that attractive here. So we've got that. Now, as far as staff, I know we're sort of middle of the road, uh, but I kind of like what we've got. So uh, probably not in this video, but in the next video, I'll be working more toward uh, when I do the off-season stuff, I'll be trying to renew some of these guys and, and see what we've got. All right, let's go ahead and hit that continue button and see if this is our email. Yep, to let us know that the car repair is finished. So now we can come in and look. Well, keep in mind we're sixth right now. And so 458 out of 570, we have no parts over here for reliability. And so for performance, all of our staff is on this. And it says it's going to be done six days after the race. Okay, which, again, we want to get it as high as we possibly can. Uh, but we should get fairly close to this 570 number, maybe not all the way. So we'll go ahead and hit continue here. So we've got the development of our new brakes happening and we're working on our new gearbox so we should have some sponsorship offers that'll pop up yeah it looks like we got three there so let's go ahead we'll take care of those okay so now we got a dilemma that we have to take care of let's see what we've got all right so a drinks company has approached us with a new idea they want to create a create a hilarious little plastic figurine of sergio all right All right, it says it might not be the most ethical money we've ever made. I don't actually see the problem with that. People do stupid marketing things all the time. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And I'm not sure what would make really a, a huge problem with that. I mean, I've seen lots of that. So anyway, we're going to take the money. I don't personally see an issue with it. Not even just because of the money. We'll lose a little morale, but I'm not terribly worried about that let's take a look at our sponsors all right so what do we have here we've got sponsorship deals four six and six they either want first or second okay which i'm not likely to be picking anytime soon uh it'd be nice so i think i'm going to go with all the upfront money here uh, i really don't see a reason not to i mean i know this is a, a nice size payout uh, if you do get it, but let's go ahead and take this one. And again, this is what I've been sort of doing along the way. You know, I get myself into a whole three, four million dollars, and then we get some more money coming in for sponsors or race bonuses or whatever, and sort of hedge that a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and continue on. All right, so it looks like our breaks are about finished let's see what our email is okay so we've got somebody's not very popular with their own team let's come back under the car oh okay so now we're up to fifth we were six now we've moved up to fifth let's just take a quick glance and see okay so we're now 508 out of 570 so we'll keep that going okay we don't care about the world championship right now. That's at least a full season away at this point for us. All right, so our breaks are done. Let's take a quick look at those. So now they are at 375. All right, we're not going to fit those, but let's take a look and see how they compare anyway. So we went from 335 to 375, and we will get to work on, on that part of it. But again, right now, we're focused on this one as high as we can get it. Okay, but not bad. Not bad at all, because we will be using this part in the next race. You can see I've already got its reliability up to 100%, and uh, so it will be used for sure. So we're doing good. Now, where does that put us? 525? 
oh, wow, that moves us up another position to fourth. All right, so so far, so good. And the reason why that's going to be great for this next race is because in our next race, we're going to have – in fact, let's just take a look at it. All right, so – Top speed and high speed corners are crucial. Both of those are spec parts. And then useful is acceleration. And that's where we're very high right now. So we are in great shape there. So we want to get this as high as we can. Oh, there we go. Now we're up to second. Boy, I really like the way this is going. So we are now ready for our race. And so we're a couple of, you know, about 20 points, 21 points away from being where we want to be. So we're almost there. I'm going to go ahead and add this part to the mix so we can go ahead and move up as high as possible. And then we'll see how everything shakes out on the deceleration side of things. So we're up to second. Man, that is that is awesome. I don't know how far out of first we are, but this is about the best shot I can imagine us having for a race right now. And this is the position I was hoping that we could be in next year uh, at the beginning of the year where we could have at least one part that was important at the majority of the races be very high on the grid, and we've now reached that. Now, we'll see what happens with the next year's car in development. Hopefully, we'll stay in this top two or three as far as that goes. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll choose continue. Um, well, the bonuses are pretty similar here, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take the fourth or above, give ourselves a little bit of margin for error. And so best case scenario is we're still going to lose just under 400,000. All right, fitting the parts. I believe everything is there that we need to be there. But we'll take a quick glance. Of course, we're not going to be using our new brakes. Um, and I actually haven't designed a new set of brakes yet. I completely forgot about that a while ago. So 375. Let's see if we can do any better than 375 or a good bit better, or I won't even worry about it. All right, let's see what we've got opened up for us here. Uh, reliability, deceleration. Now, this part I really like because that's, of course, most of what we use, nearly all of what we use unless it's raining. So I like that. Uh, but realistically speaking, uh, there's really nothing else that I see to help us out. I mean, we don't need to worry about reducing the risk level, although I'm very happy that's there. We don't need to worry about reliability right now. And then this doesn't help us with the performance that will carry over to next year. So we're just going to not worry about that. All right. And let's see. What about suspension? Let's take a quick look at suspension and see where we are. Uh, suspension is down at the bottom. Let's see, 410. Let's see what we can do here. Suspension uh, is only used as far as the important or or the crucial or useful, it's only in a few races, uh, two or three, I believe. So it's not all that here for us. So that's really, okay, that's, I mean, it'll get us a little bit. Let's go ahead, actually, let's go ahead and do that. It's enough uh, to get us what probably, yeah, about 30 to 40 on top of what we had. And it looks like, okay, this would be a good one. Uh, again, we don't care about the reliability right now. And I like this one a lot. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Go ahead and build that part. Costs us a little money, of course. Okay, so with everything in line, uh, this should be an interesting race. It's going to be 26 laps, which is by far the most laps we run in any race. But it is our first ever race on an oval. So I'm pretty excited. Let's head to the racetrack. We just finished our practice and qualifying sessions, and things went quite well. Um, actually, it was quite divided also between the two drivers. Rodriguez had a great qualifying session. He came in second. Unfortunately, things did not go as well for Sergio. So that was a little bit disappointing that we couldn't get both cars up front. Also, I noticed that, and we'll see this during the race, that the cars don't seem to use the actual... Uh, racetrack itself, they run on the apron the entire way around the track. That's extremely weird to see. You can see already from uh, the screen here that they're starting on the apron, so they don't use the, the banking at all. Um, again, odd. 
not sure if there's a, a technical reason for that or if maybe that's just the way they set up the cars uh, to race. But regardless, we've got our 15% bonuses here. Uh, this is going to be an interesting race, not only because we're on the oval, but also because the tires wear out extremely quick, and I'm going for pure speed here. I'm, I don't really want to use the medium tires at all if I can get by with it, although I may have to, uh, particularly toward the end of the race. We'll see how all this goes. But regardless, we've got 26 laps to run, and the laps uh, that we can put on the tires are probably around eight at the most. Uh, we'll see how all that goes as the race goes on. I'm hoping that the tire wear gets better, as it should, um, because if we don't get any rain, then there should be increasing amounts of grip on the track, which should help the tire wear as we go on. So I'll keep an eye on that. But at 26 laps, if I can make eight laps per stint, you can see it's going to take three pit stops. So uh, it's, it's going to be a little odd. It would be nice if we could stretch that a little bit farther. But uh, this first stint is for sure going to be a test to see if we're going to have to eventually use these medium tires. It would be nice if I could get, you know, nine uh, laps out of at least one of these stints, if not 10 laps. But again, we'll see how things go. I'm going to start off the race with only 10 laps of fuel. Again, that's not going to quite equal 10 laps as we've seen before. I'm hoping to get somewhere around eight or nine laps out of that, depending on how hard I push the car, maybe only seven. But that's the plan. Sergio is going to be coming in from uh, 15th. So let's go ahead and get this thing going. I am extremely excited to see how this works out. Um, I do have the fear that the blue flag issue is going to rear its ugly head at this track because there's just nowhere to hide. I mean, you're they're pretty much on the gas uh, most, if not the entire way around the track. So there's nowhere to hide for the back markers. And I'm worried that that's going to be an issue. So we're going to start the race with Rodriguez really pushing hard. Uh, but not on the tires. Uh, I don't want to push these tires any harder than I have to at the beginning. All right, let's see what happens as we get hopefully a couple of laps. Again, it's just weird that they're not using the actual track itself. All right, so Sergio is falling back. All right, looks like we're having some issue here with the tires coming up to temperature. We'll keep, continue to keep an eye on that. All right, Rodriguez looks like he's coming back a little bit more, but still falling back a little bit more than I would prefer. Let's see if the tire heat comes in. Um, a little bit more, maybe. All right, let's go ahead and back him off just a little bit on the fuel usage. This is weird. They keep breaking at odd points instead of passing each other. It's it's an odd race to watch so far, uh, for sure. All right, so we've get, we're here on lap five. Uh, tire wear is, we're at about halfway through the tires at this point. We'll keep an eye and see how everything's going. But so far, we just don't have the speed. All right, tire wear, or tire heat, rather, seems to have caught up. But again, nobody's passing. Uh, you see here, let's see, he's just going to hang right behind him. Okay, now he does try to pass. But again, they keep having these hiccups around the track where they seem like they almost come to a stop. All right, so we're on lap seven. All right, looks like we've got pit stops happening. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start our pit cycle uh, next time around. This would be good if we could run uh, this type of a pace. Okay, so for our first pit stop, we'll go ahead and do that. Fuel options, we're going to continue to get him uh, at around the 10. Uh, hopefully, a last stint, we can bump this up a little bit. All right, parts seem to be doing great. Of course, we're going to try to do a fast pit stop. Let's go ahead and do that. We're also going to have Sergio come in. For a pit stop, same thing for him. Bump him up to a little over 10, and also a fast strategy. All right, so we've got, uh, actually, Sergio, I mean, uh, excuse me, 
Yeah, Sergio came in one lap earlier than I wanted him to. That was me not paying enough attention. All right, so we'll have to keep that in mind. Rodriguez comes out. Looks like he's going to be about where he was before pit stop cycles began. So he'll be sixth. I'm going to actually back off a little bit here on both cars because, I, again, as the t track gains grip, which you can see it doing, as long as we don't get any weather coming in to change things, I'm going to save a little bit of fuel, uh, saving meaning that they're not both going to be on the red. And again, the reason for that is so that we can try to get a little bit farther. All right, so we're running 4th and 13th. Make that 12th. So, so far, so good. Not quite as high as what I was hoping for. All right, tire heat is maybe a little higher than I would like, but not a terrible amount. All right, we're closing in on third. We go right by him. I like that. So now, now we're in second. Okay, that's great. So the leader is way out in front of us. Now, again, we're sort of conserving fuel a little bit here uh, beyond what we necessarily have to. And that's basically because I need that last stint to really be as short as I can feasibly make it. Really don't want to use those. Oh, here we go with the blue flag. Okay, that one goes by no problem. Let's see where the leader is. Okay, the leader is pitting now. Okay, so we've got 11 laps remaining. Okay, that blue flag opportunity went by great as well. All right, so I'm going to go... All right, 10 laps remaining. All right, can I stretch this one out a little bit farther? Let's go ahead and have... Um, Sergio Pitt. Let's go ahead and have him, have him put his last bunch on here. Let's see. Okay, let's go ahead and give him a little bit more because I want to see if I can't push um, a little bit harder with him. All right, and I believe 12 will enable us to push as hard as we possibly can for the remainder of the race. The parts are just going to have to deal with it. All right, so we've got that going. Now, let's see, what was our last lap here? All right, so our fastest lap. Okay, we're not in terrible shape there. I was looking to see if the times were falling off a ton, which his times are definitely falling off. But not quite as much. Whoop, let's go back to the tires, choose our final set of tires and we'll go just a bit up over 12 here and again that's because i want to make sure that we can get as much as we can out of this final stint okay so it looks like all right sergio is in the pits now i need him to get done as quickly as possible so he is not stacking us up here okay great that worked out about as great as it possibly could Okay, so now everybody is going on full overtake mode. And already we've got a mistake. Okay, well, that isn't what we were looking for, but we still come out in third. And now we are, wow, this is quite interesting. Let's see, we were passing cars left and right. So far, the tire heat looks to be really good. And let's see, first place is way ahead of us, but we're coming up on second. Who goes into the pits now? Okay, we're, I think we're in as good a shape as we could possibly be at this point. The leader is way out ahead, so it doesn't look like we're going to have a chance for the victory. Tire heat still looks to be in good shape, which means our tire wear is as good as I think we can get it. We are now up to second and seventh. Although we are catching Sergio very quickly. Let's see. Okay, well, that's one way to get rid of the blue flag. If you notice there, we just went right through the car rather than around them. So, so far, I'm very impressed with the fixes they've made to the blue flag. Uh, this has been very nice. The cars are, maybe it's just because it's an oval. I was expecting it to possibly be worse because it was an oval. All right, so at this point... 
We are pushing as hard as we can, uh, pushing on the track anymore at this point. It's not going to help us. We're too far behind uh, for Rodriguez, but I'm going to have, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for it with, with Sergio. See if we can't get him into the points. Uh, it's worth the chance here, I believe. All right, so we got two laps remaining. All right, we're going to ignore that. And again, this is the last race of the season. Let's just, we're going to go for it here and get all we can get. And see if he can hang on for this one more lap. All right, let's go ahead and have him attack. Even though it's not going to do much, much good. But we did all we could do there. Again, tires getting down very low on both cars. But we were able to come out with two tremendous finishes. Uh, this is what I like to see. This is what happens whenever we have the opportunity uh, to really try and compete based off of uh, speed. So we come home with both cars in the points. That should help us out from a team perspective. And really help us out. Uh, as far as our prize money here at the end of the year. So we'll take a quick glance at some of these final screens. All right, there we can see the medium tires. Wow, so they made still the three pit stops, but the medium tires probably worked out for them because they, they didn't have as much drop off since they didn't wear quite as much throughout the race. Okay, so a good strategy by them. I like to see the AI doing well on their strategy. Of course, for us, it was all... <laughs> all soft tires all the time. Scrutineering is no issue whatsoever for us. And so let's see if that caught anybody else around us. I was kind of hoping that this would affect the number one finishing car. But uh, so we'll come home second and six. Let's see what this does. I'm very happy to get that podium. That was that was great. So now the driver championship standings. We come home sixth and twelfth. Let's see about the team standings. Okay, we come home in six. Just one point out. We could have picked up one additional point there. We could have, or actually, a few extra points. We could have jumped all the way up to third. Wow. So we were pretty close, uh, as it turns out. The, the winning team was well out ahead uh, without question. But when I view this in the in the lens of how what kind of chance do we have next year, because, of course, this team will be moving up to tier one, we'll have a tier from a, a team from tier one moving down to tier two that we don't know about yet. But it looks like overall, we weren't that far off. We were only five points off from second. So I like our chances going into next season, assuming, of course, that uh, we get to start off next year basically where we ended this year as far as parts go. All right, so let's go ahead and continue through these final screens and see what happened with uh, finally on our money, which should have been a little bit better because we did get the bonuses and our morale ends up pretty good. I'm not sure why our morale is only 80% there. There must've been something that I have forgotten about that hurt Rodriguez morale. All right, but of course we came in second as a team uh, and we were expecting seventh for the year. Uh, which means that seven for each race. So, so far, so good there. Happiness at 90%, uh, which is also great. And, and marketability is pegged at 100%. If we look at our money, the best possible outcome for us, because we got both of the bonuses, both for qualifying and the race, so we only lose 400000 So that is a great way to finish up the season. In our next video, we'll go into the off-season and uh, we'll continue our parts development as much as we can to try to get the best possible ending to this season with regards to our car. And then, of course, all of that is in hopes of beginning next season with the best possible car. Thank you for joining me in our Let's Play series and stay tuned for more Motorsport Manager.